Jasmine, why don't you start with uh, your mm -hmm. high confidence, high capacity teachers that you've been working with? Definitely. Yeah. So the examples I'm going to give. Um, so when I was in middle school, we had a dedicated sustainability class where the teacher taught like a lot of topics around sustainability. So a lot of these are pretty extreme. Um, I, I don't, it would be pretty hard for you guys to like really incorporate within your curriculum, but if you can, I mean, I would be pretty amazed. But um, starting in fifth grade, um, our classroom, we had our own chicken coop behind like our school. And that chicken coop was kind of a really good way to get students um, kind of like engaged in like the process of take, taking care of something like a living animal. Um, we had chickens, we would go out to feed them and we would then collect the eggs and then sell them or just give them to our teachers as a fifth grader. It was pretty cool to like hold chickens and to, you know, feel them like being soft and then they would run around. It would be, it's mm -hmm. just a very fun way to engage with animals that way. That was pretty simple, but then coming to sixth grade is where we started learning about like food systems and like the cons of conventional farming. Like we saw documentaries on how like with cattle farming and slaughterhouses, there'll be like hundreds of thousands of cows just like packed together and then all of them living in inhumane conditions. We saw documentaries on like chicken farms. Um, so it was like a stark contrast between these free range chickens behind their school to like a whole bunch of all white and pale looking chickens <laughs> on antibiotics in like warehouses and we were also given various different um like examples on sustainability um one example that really stuck out to me is so one day in class our teacher came in with a really big bowl of popcorn like it was filled it was like really big bowl it was popcorn all of that and she had all the students sit in a circle and she gave the popcorn to like the first person in the circle and she said you could take as much popcorn as you like now being a average sixth grader the first student took almost like three-fourths of the bowl and put it on his plate and when he passed the, the bowl on to the next person that person also took almost all the popcorn and by the time he got to like the fourth person there was no popcorn left in the bowl now Thinking back to this, it was a great metaphor because our teacher told us that by taking this popcorn, like eating this popcorn, taking however much you want it, is a really good metaphor to us using the resources on our earth. If we in this generation take on, like take all of these resources up, then for the people in our next generation, they won't have anything. It's really like, it's pretty similar to like the seven generations concept as well. So that was pretty mind blowing if I'm being honest, as a sixth grader. <laughs> but then coming to seventh and eighth grade, um, our teacher kind of had us go in a more entrepreneurial um, way of learning. We had this thing called a cougar co-op. Now our school mascot was a cougar and we would create various like products ourselves to then sell. We had like a Etsy page, I'm pretty sure. Um, it was just a way to like sell our products that we made like in school. We made um, like bottle, like like aluminum bottles. We would take like the tab off the top and make belts with them. Um, we made lip balms with like beeswax. We would source locally. We made um, lots of earrings with um, like with local like jewelers. We got in touch with them. Um, let's see. We made bath salts with like local ingredients. We we had a whole bunch of like local products that we made ourselves as students that then kind of also allowed us to see that, oh, being local doesn't need to be like super expensive or non-practical. You can still make it like have high quality products that are then also like helps the earth and helps ourselves. It was a really interesting concept to learn. And then, as I said, in eighth grade, we came to that passion project on what you would like to change. But this is kind of like a little overview of what I did in middle school. And then coming to high school, um, when I got involved with our local farm to school club, 
um, we did a lot more projects. It shifted from like, because now I wasn't taking class, I was in a club. Our club focused around trying to spread the message of sustainability to our, to the students in our high school. And we made a lot of interactive, engaging ways to get students involved. Now, a lot of this also happened during the COVID pandemic here, and we had to be a little creative. Like, for example, we would gather like a whole bunch of sweet potatoes from like a local farmer, and then we would give it to like each student. And then we would have like a Zoom call where we would, like we would make the recipe like live and have other students cook it with us to then see like how local foods can taste good. And we did a whole bunch of projects like that, mostly focused around, you know, getting students involved. Yes, this brings back a lot more too. Yeah, going back mm -hmm. to middle school, we had chicken coops. We did have um, some vegetable gardens in our greenhouse that us as students also built. Um, previous students had planted apple trees on our school land. Um, the compost bins and beehives, I think, I'm pretty sure the beehives actually been finished like a couple years ago. But we also had like, we made our own like soil to grow stuff in by using like newspaper and compost from our school. Um, like we designed like compost. So like during our school lunches, students, if they had like leftover food, they'd put these in these buckets. And instead of throwing that in the trash, we then use that to compost that food scrap material into soil for like actual planting, which is also really cool. We did a whole bunch of projects. This is all very high capacity, <laughs> high effort and high everything. So it might be a lot, but there is a lot of things you can do to really get students engaged with sustainable concepts.